not disturb. That's a new podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how does this thing even work? Well, it's funny because I said do not disturb, but there's like bad know. weather coming, and it's like I want to know if a tornado is it bad about weather to hit. coming. No, not tonight. But oh, I remember okay. recently, I was like, I don't, I don't know how this do not disturb thing works. Oh. I want to be disturbed sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But when well, my life is in danger, in disturb danger. me. Yeah. Yeah. I am I like disturbed. It. I like it. Uh, cool. It's been uh, it's been a couple of weeks. We took a little bit of a little bit of a hiatus. Oh yeah. Um, and collected a lot of uh, new questions. Yeah. Uh, so some really to, good ones. Of course, as always. Yeah. Um, we'll dive into those and kind of give you a little bit of a teaser as to what maybe what some of those might be. But um, today, um, as I'd like to always say, is another it's good a hard one. one. Yep, it's a hard one. Yeah. Uh, it's, this is our 15th episode. Come on. Um, I don't know if we start doing like, uh, seasons, you know, oh, season yeah. one. Yeah. This is the season, pr- season, uh, what do they call it? The, um, uh, premieres, premieres and all finales. That. Finale. We'll is this to, a finale? Can we start so. season two next? I gotta like, get at you a 16. Re- <laughs> I gotta get you a really a hard ringer. one for, <laughs> for the finale. That's a good idea. We'll keep that in mind. Let's do it. Uh, so today, uh, I think we gave a teaser on Facebook uh, about it. It was this uh, this idea of once saved, always saved. But yep. I think ultimately the question, um, the way that we in- interpret that is, uh, is can a Christian yeah. lose their salvation? Yeah. And that's a hard one. I mean, and I think it's one that gets asked all the time. Uh, so especially if you grew up in the South, uh, in the Bible Belt, type situation you got people who are on both ends of the spectrum so you got people who uh let's just say grew up maybe a similar god mm-hmm. right so uh they have some verses that they use that say that you can lose your salvation uh or maybe you grew up baptist and a lot of baptists have the whole once saved always saved i think that's where that phrase kind of came from mm-hmm. uh, or at least the heart behind it. Yep. Uh, and then you've had these people battling for years, <laughs> you know, and, and want to throw a verse, want to throw another verse, and one, you know, and they'll yep. they'll bicker and fight back and forth so much so that neither one of them knows what they're talking about anymore. Yeah. Um, but I think ultimately, I think the reason why you ask this question, if I can go out on a limb and say that, is either just out of curiosity, mm-hmm. uh, and I would challenge you if it's out of curiosity, to why you're asking the question. Mm-hmm. Like, are you trying to find a loophole around, <laughs> yeah. you know, yep. not following and not doing what he tells you to do and not obeying and all that? Got or a uh, big vacation coming up. Yeah. Right now. Like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do yeah. what I want to right now in this moment. I would challenge you with that. Or if it's just out of curiosity to go, I just want to know, mm-hmm. you know, what scripture says. And I think that's a good place to be. Uh, the other parts of asking this question from what I've seen and what I found is uh, from people who know somebody mm-hmm. that maybe they grew up with, or maybe it was a brother or sister, or maybe it was a mom or dad, or maybe now it's a kid yep. that you saw profess yep. faith in Jesus. And then now they're living a life that doesn't look like it at all. So now you're asking the question is what they, is what I saw them do as a kid, mm-hmm. you know, is it going to hold firm to the end, no matter what they're doing in between? Yep. Uh, and I think either one of those is is a good place to be, mm-hmm. you know, from figuring out what the Bible has to say about it. I think that's I can. There's probably a lot of parents. Um, yeah. I'm probably my mom and dad in particular. You know, there were seasons in my life yeah. where they were probably like, "Lord, is he still saved with yeah. all what he's doing or whatever?" You know. Yeah. So I'm sure that's you know that's probably part of just being human. Um, but before we dive a little bit more into the question there's this whole definition of salvation. Ooh, yeah. So I think let's just, I want to take a step back a little bit and just define yeah. salvation. Yeah. No, I think that's a good thing too, because uh, I think the first thing we have to realize is you and I can't earn it. Right. Yep. I mean, it's, you've <clears throat> been saved by grace through faith. So it's this whole idea that I believe yep. in the grace that Jesus gave me. Right. So therefore, You know, I can't earn it. So you can't earn salvation. Um, uh, I know there's a lot of people who have this whole idea that baptism, like as a kid, um, gave you salvation. Right. You know, and there's certain, you know, denominations that believe that as well. And when you start looking at biblically, I don't necessarily know that that's what baptism is. You know, baptism is 
as a, as a profession of faith isn't necessarily in there, but as a declaration that I've already believed in my heart. You know, like the Bible says, it's the next step after salvation. So right. you profess Jesus as Lord, mm -hmm. right? And therefore you get baptized by showing everybody that you've already believed. So um, I don't, I know that probably can touch a nerve too, to some people who may be listening as well, but uh, we can do a whole nother one on that. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, ultimately and biblically where we land as far as salvation is Jesus is the son of God, perfect blameless, holy, spotless life, right? Yep. So the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. And when God created Adam and Eve, they sinned, which worked its way all the way down to us, yep. which you're born a sinner, mm -hmm. right? Thanks yep. to Adam and Eve. Uh, so my sin, the payment for my sin is death. Right. But God looked at his son, right? For God so loved the world that he gave us one and only son, mm -hmm. that whoever believes in him, right, would not perish but have everlasting life. So he gave Jesus as a sacrifice, you know, for our sin. Yep. So Jesus paid the penalty for, for what I owed. Yep. He paid my penalty and my debt. Yep. And therefore, I have a brand new life, right? Yep. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, Right, that he is the king, he's above it all, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. So after he died on the cross for our sins, uh, if I believe that God raised him from the dead, then the next part of that verse says you will be saved. Right. Right. So salvation isn't something you and I earn. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something you and I you know, can check off enough boxes and lists to get to. Salvation is a gift that was given to us by grace. We didn't deserve it. Right. right? We didn't do anything to earn it. But by grace, and the way that we get it is through faith. Yep. Faith that Jesus is the Son of God, actually bled, died for your sin, right? And then was buried, and on the third day, he came back to life. Yep. Defeating your old life so that you could have a brand new one. Yep. And, uh, and salvation is just that easy. Yep. There's nothing hard about it, to be honest. It's just whether or not you and I want to believe it now. Yep, and it's yeah. not just just saying it; it's it's the heart of it. Yeah. It's the actual belief because you can say all day long that you believe. Oh yeah, but, you know. Yeah, well, because you you start looking at this question, diving in, you you've got where the Bible tells you that Satan and his his army believe that Jesus is who he says he is. Yep. So they believe, they just don't want to submit to that. Right. So I, I know who he is. Yep. Right. I'm just not submitting to that and I'm not putting my life underneath his lordship. Yep. You know, and I think that's kind of where we get, you know, to going in this to answer the question is, OK, well, is it just OK to believe? You know, the Bible makes it pretty easy and simple. Uh, but I think there is this whole following and aligning, not that earns your salvation but shows that you have it. Right. And, uh, and that's what I want to get to right now. Cause I, and I just, yeah. I don't want to cast my opinion. Cause yep. I mean, that's you, not what we do. You want to know, yeah. like you want to know what it says. So I'm going to give you a whole bunch. You can take notes, jot them down. If you want to, we're going to read through a bunch of uh, scripture real quick. So first John chapter five, verse 11 through 12, it says this. And, and this is what God has testified that he has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son, so whoever has the son has life. And whoever does not have God's son does not have life. So the kicker, I think, to that is God gave you eternal life. Not temporary. Not temporary. So when it comes to can a Christian lose their salvation, well, if you've truly believed in Jesus, that he is who he says he is, did what he said he did, right, and he's given you that new life, then you don't have a temporary life until you screw it up. Yep. You know, oh, you got temporary life, but you met, you make one mistake. You, yeah. like you mess up hanging in front of you. Yeah. The whole yeah. Time. yeah. So it, no, it's eternal life. It's, yep. it's good for all time. Yep. Right. So you go on down. Uh, first Thessalonians five, verse 23 through 24 it says, now may the God of peace make you holy in every way and make your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until the day of the Lord Jesus. Right. So God will make this happen. For he who calls you is faithful. 
And I love that because now you're starting to get to a place where, okay, who actually gives salvation Mm -hmm. and who helps you keep salvation, right? So it it told you right there, God will make this happen, right? Go down to another verse in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians uh, 1, verse 8 and 9. It says, he will keep you strong. Talking about God, he will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all the blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this. For he is faithful to do what he says, and he has invited you into partnership with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So I think the the logic behind these two passages is this whole thing of, of God is faithful. Yep. And he's the one who turns us into holy and blameless. Right. Because when you start asking this question, well, uh, can a Christian lose their salvation? People people respond to that and go, uh, well, nobody's perfect. Right. Well, that's not what he expects no. he don't expect you to be perfect or human but he does expect you to be surrendered yeah and submitted and when you are he is the one who during your life and that whole process will continue to keep you holy and blameless it's it, the bible uses this big old word of sanctification so yep. it's the process of sanctification which is making you more into who he is so every single day it's him glorifying you more and more and more and more and more until the day that he comes. Yep. Right. And and he does that, which I think is interesting because this comes back down to the whole uh, can a Christian lose their salvation or once saved, always saved. And it's this whole idea that if you and I can't earn salvation or gain it or do anything to get it, then how can you and I lose it? You can't lose anything you didn't own. You know? Get earn. Right. I mean, so if I can't do anything to get it, then it tells me, therefore, that I don't have the power enough to lose it. So he is the one who protects you. He is the one who brings this together. So to answer the question, can a Christian, and I'm just going to go with the question, yep. can a Christian, so if you look at a Christian, a definition in the Bible, it is somebody who is born again. So somebody who looks at their life and says, okay, my life is not surrendered and submitted to Jesus. Um, I'm going to take that. I'm going to make a, a, a decision to surrender and submit my life, believe he is who he says he is, do what he said he did, and is going to do what he said he's going to do. I'm going to submit that. The Bible says you're born again. Yep. You're a new creation. Yep. Your old life died with Jesus, right, when he died on the cross, but your new life came when he came out of the tomb Yep. Right. and rose from the dead. So you're a brand new creation. So can a Christian... Just a biblical definition of a Christian, somebody who's born again, has professed faith in Jesus, and is following him, right? Can they lose salvation? Then the answer is no, because you can't... Be unborn. Be unborn. Yeah. You're born again. You, your old life is dead and gone. Yep. Now your new life is here. Now, are you going to make mistakes? Yes. Say. Are you going to do some stuff that you shouldn't do? Yes. Are you going to look up at a season in your life and go, man, I hadn't been following him real well at all? Yes. Right, but he's working in that new life to perfect you and to sanctify you, and it's this whole process. And I'm going to come back to this, I think, in just a little bit. But I want you to, I want you to get this thought. If I, if I am a true believer, and I've been born again, then there's a process that I go through in my heart all the time. Yep. And I never outgrow this process uh, because let's just say that I chose to do something stupid, mm-hmm. right? So I chose to, I don't know, let's just do the Ten Commandments, yep. right? I chose to steal and kill and lie and commit adultery, and I've chosen to do all of that stuff. Yep. Um, to envy and covet, I chose to do it all. If I do that, then as a follower of Jesus, my my next thing that I have to do after that is repent. Mm-hmm. So the Bible says that. Like We don't like to talk about it in our culture. Yeah. But the Bible says that as, as a follower of Christ, what I do is I repent. So I turn from the me choosing to disobey, turn around, and choose to obey. Yep. Right. So it's this whole process of repent, follow, obey. Right. And yep. then you know disobey somewhere in there because you and I always do it. Yep. So repent, follow, obey. Disobedience happens. Now I go back to the first step in the process. Right. Repent. Follow, obey. Disobedience happened. Okay, back to the front. <laughs> yep. Repent. And I think when that's our life and that's our goal, that's the definition of a Christian according to the Bible. 
then there's no way you can lose your salvation. Yeah. You know, it's like your kid, my kid, they disobey us all the time. Yeah. But do they lose a standing as a son or a daughter? No. No, they're a son or a daughter. That's like right. they were born into our family. And they you can't take that from them. Like my kids are gonna be Bradleys. Like it don't matter what they do. Always. Like they're a Bradley. You know, and if that's the case with me, who's a messed up, jacked up dad, then how much more so is that, you know, who God is, where, where he says we, he's adopted us into his family. Yeah. It's a big deal. It is. So is there something to be said for the uh, sort of the heart behind that disobedience, though? There's a little bit like, is there a, you know, there's a question if you when the disobedience happens there's maybe some scenarios where you might say, well, maybe you may not have just not been saved to begin with. Oh yeah. And that's different. Like you can't just, that's, I was saved. Then I, you know, now I'm all good. So I can go and do whatever I want. No, that's not, that's not the case because you didn't do the process. You're not Mm -hmm. doing, going through the obeying process. Um, and you probably weren't actually saved in the first place. Yeah. If, uh, if that's where your heart was. Yeah. No, I think that, I think that's true. I think there's a lot of people who think they are yep. and who aren't. I mean, the Bible tells you that too. I right. mean, it even tells you that about, uh, in my opinion, about pastors. It says, there'll be many that come before me. And they said, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not teach about you? Did we not cast demons out, you know, in your name? And it says that Jesus is going to look at them and says, I never knew you. Mm. So I think there's a lot of people who, who talk. They say it. But don't believe it yeah right you know and there's multiple passages in scripture that says okay you the outside of your body looks clean but the inside is messed up so i do think just living in the bible belt you know i I think there's a whole lot of people who um have this whole thought while i prayed a prayer when i was six (laughs) you know yeah Uh, and so i'm saved you know i haven't followed him a day since uh, I haven't listened to him a day since but i believe i'm saved i would i would question that whole salvation yeah uh, because salvation is is submitting your life to the lordship of Christ, so it's it's a constant. Have I given Him control of every part of my life? Yep. And if we're looking at areas of our lives and we're just going, I know He wants control over that, but I ain't giving it to Him. Then are, do you really believe in who He says He is anyway? Yeah. You know, and and I would, you know, just to break up. And, do a little funny thing right here, or at least I think it's funny. You may, somebody <laughs> may get offended by it, but it's this whole idea of like a vaccine. Mm-hmm. And I think we have a, a generation of people who believe that, okay, well, if I get the salvation vaccine, then I'm good. Like I won't get eternal separation from God. I don't need like, a, I'm good. I don't need the booster. Salvation. Right. I don't need, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. You know, and I'll live however I want to. I got, I got the shot. Yeah. And it was the same thing that happened in COVID, right? So they said, okay, well, we, we produced this COVID shot. So you're going to get this COVID shot and you're not going to get it. It's going to be fine. And then what happened? People got, got it. it. Oh, well, here's a booster. That didn't matter either. Yep. Like you were getting, oh, here's another booster. Oh, you got to take five shots to be good. No, you're just going to get it. Yep. Right? So, so I do think that if you have this idea that salvation is a vaccine, then you might want to reconsider salvation. Go back to the start of the podcast. Yep and figure out, do I actually believe that? Uh, because I do think there's a whole lot of people that are living going, I'm saved, you know, but in all actuality, I don't know that they are. So there, and there might even be that person sitting in the auditorium one day that feels like they want to raise their hand, but they're like, no, I'm already saved. I, I, yeah, I yeah. was saved when I was 12 yeah. or whatever. But if your heart and the Holy Spirit is moving in you to raise yeah. your hand, it's for a reason. Yeah. Maybe you weren't to begin with. Yeah. So raise Absolutely. that hand. And you see that all the way through scripture too. And, and I think that's one of the ones that I wanted to put in the podcast is that whole first John two nineteen, yep. right? So what if I'm starting to look at people's lives and I go, okay, well, this person was in church or if I'm a parent and I'm looking at a kid and I'm going, well, they made a decision, but now they're not living like, oh, you know, like, are they, Yeah. were they, were they, you know, I don't, I don't know. Well, the first John chapter two, verse 19, look at what it says. It says these people left our churches. And, and this isn't necessarily talking about uh, specific church. Like, okay, well, they, they walked out of church with you and they went somewhere else. Right. Uh, <clears throat> he says this, but they never really belong to us. So I think that when you study that word, uh, what he's talking about is the family of faith. So he says, okay, well, these people were a part of our churches. Yep. 
But when they left us, when they left the family of faith, when they left faith altogether, it says they never really belonged to us. Yep. Otherwise, they would have stayed with us. And when they left, it proved that they did not belong to us. Because if they had, they wouldn't have left. Uh-huh. And I think, I mean, God loves you. He cares about you. Salvation is easy for us. Salvation was definitely hard for him. Yes. But salvation was, was easy for us. But we, we can't read the Bible and think that once I say, okay, but I believe in Jesus, I'm good, and live however I want to and think that's actually salvation. Because there are so many things in the Bible that says, okay, because you're now a follower, now you'll have the fruit of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you, right? right? Which is love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. And we look at our lives and we're going, okay, some of this doesn't add up, okay? Which starts us back in that process of repentance yep. and follow. Yep. And now I need to obey, yep. right? And I think if that's where we keep going, then salvation is is secure, right? It's assured, assured. pretty much. Yeah. You know, so you get into this whole deal, but it's not automatic. It's not like you say one prayer and that one prayer is automatically gets you into heaven. That's not that's not it. It's not about what comes out of your mouth. Yep. It's about everything in your heart to choose. And at that point, if I choose to believe that Jesus is Lord and submit my life to him then I have this whole thought that every area of my life, he knows better than I know. Mm -hmm. But if I just choose to completely walk away from that, then did I really experience salvation to begin with? Or did I get coerced during a service to do something? Did I feel obligated because my family believed a certain way? Or was it just show? At yeah. that moment, yeah, does that make does that yeah, make sense? 100%. You know, we talked about Judas yep. earlier. Yeah, uh, he he lived his whole life knowing, like, I mean, at least the part that he spent with Jesus. Like, there's no way that he looked at Jesus and went, "You're not the Son of God." Yeah, are you kidding me? Yeah, After all that. that stuff, yeah. But somehow, still at the end of his life, he's going, no, "I don't, I don't believe." And you just have to be. We're all sitting there scratching our head, like, "How? Yeah, what? what? Yeah. Why? Yeah." And I think it's the lordship thing. Yeah, uh, he he ultimately didn't have his life surrendered to the Lord. Yep. So therefore, I got out of it. And if we don't have it surrendered to the Lord, then I mean, are we really saved to begin with? Hmm. So to try to sort of bring this to a, a close, um, how do? I, you, mm -hmm. we know for sure that we're saved. Yeah, no, I think that's good. Um, I, I think I would take you back to Scripture to, to work all this stuff out. So Hebrews chapter 3, uh, if you look at verse 14, it says, For if we are faithful to the end, trust in God just as firmly as when we first believed, then we'll share in all the blessings that belong to Christ. And this is not just one verse in the Bible that talks about like if we're faithful to the end. You know, you yeah. look at you look at other scripture where it says, "Well, I I've ran the race, you know, I, I finished the the race and, and the faith, and I've kept it to the end." Uh, I think this whole idea of salvation is talking about perseverance. You know, it, it, the Bible says, "Work out your salvation in fear and trembling." Mm -hmm. Right, the Bible talks about sanctification and how your your salvation's always being worked out. Yep, and he's he's working in your life more and more and more. Uh, so ultimately, I think it's um, are you going to persevere all the way to the end? Because if I believe in Jesus, then there's nothing in life that can stop me. Nope. Why why would I stop believing? Because it got hard. Because I went into a situation where I didn't understand. It doesn't matter. Like if I believe that Jesus is who he says he is, did what he said he did, uh, and is going to do what he said he's going to do, then ultimately it doesn't really matter what happens. Nope. Like I'm going to choose to believe. Yep. So if I fall off before the end, then did I really believe? Yep. So I think that's what I would look at is that whole process that we talked about. Mm -hmm. 
does that process actively work out in your life, like on a daily basis? You know, is, is there a moment of repentance? I'm sorry for doing this. I'm sorry for talking to her like that again. I'm yeah. sorry for acting like that again. I'm sorry for, you, you know, yep. like repentance. And then follow in. Yep. Like, okay, I'm choosing to turn back towards you. And then obedience, mm-hmm. right? So I'm going to now, instead of disobeying, I'm going to obey in this area, Yep. right? But then there's always going to be that disobedience because we're not perfect. Yep. But it's that cycle. Do we persevere with that cycle all the way through the end? Right, because ultimately it's not us that can earn our salvation and or keep our salvation. So when we start looking at how do we know that for sure that we're saved, well, ultimately that that's a God thing. Yep. He's gonna give it, he's gonna secure it, and he's gonna make sure that it's finished. Our process is to choose to believe and confess along the journey. I confess you are Lord. Well, what that means is you are Lord of this part of my life. Like you're, you're Lord of my money, hmm. right? So I repent and how I'm stewarding my money. Yep. I'm going to follow what you said to do with my money. I'm going to obey that. Right. Or you're the, you're the Lord of my relationships. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so I'm going to look at what you say about relationships. I'm going to obey what you say about relationships. Right. So every part where it says confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, he's Lord over every part of my life. It's not the a la carte version. Right. This is all, all of it. All of it, every single bit. So if he is, I just believe. Yep. And I do that my whole entire life. And what it says right there is that if you hold firmly, like you did at first, like you believed at first, then you'll walk in to share in every part of that. So I think it's this whole idea that that God is who he says he is, that he's made you a covenant that if you believe in Jesus and the sacrifice that he laid down of his son, then ultimately he is the one who's going to give you salvation. He's going to keep your salvation. And then he's going to allow you to walk into it at the end. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, yeah. It's, it's heavy. This is a heavy topic. It is. And, and I think as easy as salvation is, I think it's a little more deep than what most people want to live out. And I think when it comes to this, I don't want to give away any false sense of security Mm-mm. that, hey, you prayed a prayer, so you're good. That's not, that's, no. that's not what I see. When I look in here, that's not what I see. Yep. Um, but I also don't want it to be like a, every night you lay awake at night, you know, thinking, oh, my gosh, am I f- for real saved? Yeah. Well, you don't need to do that either <clears throat> because salvation is secure for eternity. Yep. It's the very first verse that we read. Yep. Right, he gave you eternal life. Yep, it's life forever. Um, but I do think that that is when it talks about work out your salvation of fear and trembling. I think there is this whole, okay, am I living what this says to do? Am I following that process? Yeah, of repent, follow, obey. And if I am, then I lay down at night and go to sleep, man. Yeah. He's the Prince of Peace, so this shouldn't keep you up. That includes peaceful sleep. Yeah. Go to bed. There's some other questions you could be asking, I'm sure. No, you yeah. know, and yeah. they're gonna, like you said, the 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 key is that it's not easy, and we're not trying to give uh, false sense of security. But if you go through that process and that cycle, rinse, repeat. Yeah, go back through. Go back through. Yeah, man. If we would have uh, <clears throat> thought about it beforehand, if we didn't think about this whole season thing, we probably could have made this uh, a season finale. But Ooh. we have to. We have to end with a cliffhanger. I think that's how Hollywood oh, yeah. does it. That is you how know, Hollywood does a season. it. We gotta that's right. get them itching for season that's two. Right. Hey, or you could just in post edit, you could you could uh, release this video just halfway through. Oh my good. Yeah, hey, part fi- one. F- yeah, part, part two one, part on two. season two. Man. All right, we'll t- we'll we'll dig into that that's a little funny. bit. Well, either way, um, thanks for another one. Yeah. And uh, we'll dig into the the question bank and be back either with number 16 or season two episode one episode one because at some point it's going to get too hard to figure out what episode we're on i know you see some of these the the rock stars that have been doing this they're on like episode 342 i'm like oh my goodness yeah every week i'm going i don't know what episode we're on. (laughs) yeah i'm just gonna just say welcome welcome yeah cool that's it well thanks we'll uh we'll see you next time boom